seven up. Hope you've uh, enjoyed the journey so far. There's quite a lot to do, isn't there? And it's quite a lot been done. But today, there's a couple of little things in the engine bay that I need to button up, i.e. brake servo. I need to reroute one of the pipes to the brake servo because in my old application, the pipe work, the plastic pipe for the Clio is getting a little bit warm on the turbo and started to uh, go a bit funky. So we're gonna trim that. I'm going to reroute it so it's out of the way and uh, keeps nice and cool. I think it's like Hurricane Katrina outside. Shutters are rattling like a good one. But hope you can hear as well and uh, yeah, stay tuned. Right then guys, so here is your uh, brake servo. And you've got a plastic pipe which comes up round here, back across the firewall. And here, the turbo was uh, getting a bit hot, and it's a good job we noticed it. So we rerouted up here. This goes to the back of the Clio inlet. So what we've done is we rerouted it, put a one-way check valve in there, and then run it round the side of the uh, 20 valve block. And yeah, that worked. So. I've just trimmed, I've just cut the pipe here just off the servo so it's pointing up. So now our new route's going to go up here with the check valve and then straight into the side of the inlet. So we don't need all this. And it's still cable tied to the fuel lines, but I don't know whether you can see here, it's had a bit of heat go through it. So it sort of melted the pipe a little bit. It's not made any holes or it's not burnt through but it's still a bit dicey but you live and you learn with these type of things so it's a good job we noticed it now because uh, Neil the, the new owner of Matilda he won't have this to worry about because it'll now run straight out the way and uh, there won't be no heat getting to it what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our screwdriver undo this Jubilee clip here Get it down into here, put another Jubilee clip on there. We're only pushed it on anyway, so well, we're going to put a Jubilee clip on anyway and uh, get it out of the way. Winning! brake servo now the, the pipe for that all tucked out the way that's not going to foul anything goes around the back of the, uh, the brake master cylinder and then it's going to come back on itself and then go into the inlet manifold like so up next here's our 3 inch down pipe that we made stainless steel 316 grade and that is the Clio 182 Lambda sensor. So, as I said, keeping everything happy, keeping the car happy, as many things as possible, Clio as you can, and uh, jobs are good and read well, did its job, perfect. So, what we're gonna do is, we got this gasket, it's a Clarius one, there's the part numbers, Cost 14 quid from our local motor factors. I know the gearbox nearly gave me an earnie, but so did the price of this thing. I mean, they are much cheaper from different places, but I needed one fast and uh, they got me one, so. I'll put that on there. Ideally, we wanted the multi layer steel one, but we couldn't get older one. And they sent us this, so. Then we'll be using the copper 
crushed nuts and they are 15 mil and then you put some uh, washers on as well like so so in theory with these crushed nuts they shouldn't work themselves loose some people may not may have had that experience before they're driving along and the next thing they know the car sounds like a tractor and uh yeah your down pipe nuts have uh, rattled themselves loose these uh like the tighter you get them they sort of crush closed so they don't come loose in theory i know it's not the case all the time but most of the time they do the job turns on that one, the one at the back is the harder one to get to. Putting the down pipe on first because we've got plenty of wiggle room in the bay. Once we start trying to get the engine in. We'll get a swivel on here if we can. I'll come back at this with a... Uh... Oh no, got it. Nice and tight, no need for a swivel, it's tight and that's tight. You've got a 3 inch uh, quick release V band, we use the quick release even though they're nearly double the price of a normal V band because there is a link pipe which goes to this section which goes over the subframe and that'll be this. And that's got the flexi on. We also put in another Lambda Boss for use with the AFR gauge. We didn't use one, but it's there, it's an option. So we made all this, it's all TIG welded. This will go on here. You don't want to do it all in one go because you're never going to get the whole downpipe up and over the subframe. So we did it in two sections. And then the link pipe then goes to the three inch exhaust that we built. I mean, even though we did it in two places, I mean, if we went to, if we went two and a half inch, it would have been, would have given us a, a few mil more space to play with, but three inch is always better because it gets rid of these exhaust gases quicker and it allows you to make more power in case you want to go down that route in the future. It's been a while since uh, I built one of these or the last engine. I can't remember the exact measurement for the alternator belt. I know it's a six rib because there's six guidelines on each and uh, as for length, well it's how long is a piece of string and funny you say that is because you can actually use a piece of string as a guideline to match up a suitable belt for it. So give it a little tiny bit of slack. So if I go over there, get some snips. That is our mock-up alternator belt. So what we want to do now is measure it, how long it is, and then try and match something up of the correct size. Then I'll give you a part number when I get a proper one. So now you've got your piece of string, you lay it out flat, you get your tape measure, and you measure end to end and make a line. And I have got 
940 millimetres long. So we'll try and match that up and see what we can find. Right then. Here we have an old auxiliary belt. And to, I've matched it up to the uh, 940 measurement and it actually marries up to a 6PK 938, sorry. So 938 millimetres and works out to like a Mark III Fiesta auxiliary belt. So we put that to size and when we put that together end to end at 938, that's what it looks like. So we'll match it up to the alternator and the uh, bottom poly of the uh, engine and see how far we're off. So now we've got our aux belt that we've trimmed to size at 938. We can put it next to the block onto the uh, alternator and bottom pulley and it looks pretty damn close. So once we uh, engage the tensioner, the tensioner is a 17 mil by the way. You need a 17 mil spanner on there. Take the tension off. So you can see how far that swings. And now you can see how tight it's gonna go. So a 6PK 938 belt is exactly what you need. And as I say, they're off a Ford Fiesta or something along them lines. You'll find, you'll find out they'll probably come from a Vauxhall or a Fiat or whatever. But that's uh, a cheat code of how to uh, spec up an alternator belt. So if we get the tension back, as I said, this is a 17 mil spanner and I've got like a three or four mil drill bit to put in the, uh, the lock off hole. You'll want to do that as well. So the 6PK938 We'll go around there To there And you've got enough bagginess to get it over the bottom pulley There's about 25 mil overlap when you put to play with And then obviously when you pull the tensioner pin out it's going to be nice and tight, so you're welcome. Winning! Look at what we've got to do next. Refit the pedal assembly. We've took off the braided line for the uh, VR6 uh, master cil uh, slave cylinder, and we've undone the Jubilee clip for the little reservoir for the clutch. This I think is a Honda one. I used to mess around with a lot of Hondas and something's telling me this used to be off a Honda, probably a Civic EG or EK or something. But yeah, we've got the switches to go back in. They're just a literal twist off for the clutch and brake. Then you've got the plug for the uh, drive-by-wire throttle pedal. That's all these sensors or switches and plugs are untampered Clio, so it's nice and easy. I've got no seats to contend with, so this should go in a lot smoother than when I put it in the car, so let's go. As I said, these are the original switches from the Clio for the pedal assembly, so that's your uh, drive-by-wire throttle. This, I believe, is a clutch, and that is the brake. I could be wrong with these two, but it's either going to be one or the other. So whatever one fits the slot is what we're going to go with. And we'll find out when the car's running, whether the brake, brake lights come on or not. Please bear with me. I can't get the camera at a better angle than this. Because I've obviously got to get my fat arse in there and upside down and up into that little space up there. If I take you off the tripod, they give you an idea of how tight it is. So, if you've got a few little 13 mil bolt uh, nuts to go on to the uh, captive bolts, 
Then you've got four nuts to go onto the uh, master cylinder. And yeah, it's just a bit of a faff trying to uh, rattle it into place with everything in the way. So bear with me. Tick-tock, time's up, but I make a move Don't think twice now, you got things to prove I'm not playing, I'm not hard to get Cause when I saw you, there was nothing else Right, now the paddle assembly's in. You can plug your throttle in, like so. That's gonna be clutch, I think. This looks like it could be brake. And brake's got circle like a circlet thing and a pin. So a pin goes in and then this goes in afterwards. And it just slides across. If it wants to play ball. But as I said, it's been a while. Can't remember where it goes, but I'll figure it out in a minute. It goes like that. Yeah, that's the one. That's the badger. Then you have brakes. You have accelerator. And then she's all bled up. You'll have clutch. That might be it. That might be clutch actually. I'm not sure. As I said, it's been a while. Let's your pedal assembly in. Thank God. This clutch line now to the uh, slave. Can run around the back. Down in. Try not to kink it. So I'll run around there, then back into the uh, slave cylinder. Can probably run it a bit lower, but that can all get uh, sorted once the engine's in the bay. You can see where everything wants to go. Slave cylinder is going to go through here, but stop it from leaking a little bit of fluid. Going to. Put the uh, reservoir back on. 
things out the way. I'll go for here. It's a bit fiddly. A little bit there. I'm going to have to drop it down the back. Another nail like so. So I'll get a 10mm socket and a, a 10mm spanner on it. Tighten that up. The job's a good one. Right, next we're going to move this reservoir out of the way. I mean, it's not really in the way, but we don't really want to be cracking it, trying to get the engine in for this aching, so best to be safe and sorry. It's two 10 mils. Voila. Right, next, let's get the slave cylinder in. We've got some 230 mil bolts. Let's get them out of there. Some decent spring pressure on there. It's hard to try and get the, uh, the bolts in. One. I don't know whether you can hear the weather outside, but it's disgusting. Don't really want to be gunning these up. A spanner, no, that should be right. I say you're probably going to be better off of a spanner this side, but we get there. A little bit stiff, it's been a while since you've been out the car. A 
just nip them off. Like so. Right then. It's not far off ready to go back in the car now. So, I mean, we can do the alternator belt when that comes. We can do that in situ with the engine in. Just trying to think if there's any, anything else that'll uh, cause an issue while it's uh, in the car. I can't think of anything offhand, but we're not far away. I know what we'll do. We'll get the uh, gearbox mount bolted up. Stiff one, Jesus. So let's take that off there like that. Right, we've got two M10s, they're about 60 mil long. This side's threaded, so you've got to line it up a little bit. 17 mil. Wind it in until it starts to go. It's actually bolted onto the back edge. So that's got that one. That goes all the way through. Now what we're going to do, we're going to stick some M10 nuts on the back. And then 10 nuts in theory, usually 15 mil. So we've got 15 mil spanner. And get that nice and tight. Same again for this one. I'm gonna put run a 15 mil nut on the back. I use the flange nuts because then they sort of eat into the metal and stops them from uh, coming loose. Let's tie it on the front because there's a thread. Then we're going to tighten up the back. The reason why we're doing this outside the car is just for ease of use and it's a little bit easy to access. All right, so that's that done. So that's not coming off now. We'll do the top engine mount when the engine's in the bay because that's easier to get to than this. So. Yeah. Something I haven't mentioned yet is what I did to the front of the car. And you've got this crash bar. And what I've done is I've cut out a section because I wanted the intercooler to sit as far back as possible. So I didn't want to be cutting the front bumper out and all the grills because I think it looks a bit naff. But that's personal opinion. If you want it to look all aggressive, and you want to cut the front out so you can see a big gnarly intercooler hanging out the front. That's that's to totally your call and that's up to you. But I made this cheeky little twin pass intercooler. So it enters here, passes through and comes back out the bottom. I wanted it nice and compact and I wanted it to sit up out the way and not foul or anything. Then obviously, Air still got to pass through it, so there's 50 mil holes cut into the back edge of the crash bar. I've recessed it about 40 millimeters in as well, and it sits nice and flush. No interference with the uh, 
the lower bottom grill of the Clio. And that's exactly how I wanted it. I didn't want you to know it was a turbo until I've disappeared. So this was mounts up here. The weather's gone nasty again outside, if you can hear it. Just fiddly doing this by yourself. Do you get the idea? So with this in situ, it sits about 10 mil behind the crash bar. Oh, that really is coming down now. I don't know if you can still hear me or not. So when that's tightened up, you can't tell. And if I swing you around here, lower you down a bit there's a three inch hole here I made the twin pass two and a half inch which is uh, 63 mil and this if it's a right pipe will go on the top of here and poke through then go to the uh, top boost pipe So it's all nice and compact. It's a bit of a faff to get on, but you get the idea. So, the bottom hose goes round the bottom, and the top hose goes through the top of the crash bar. And that's another adaption I made to the Clio for uh, space constraints. Also, you've noticed there's no slam panel and we're running bonnet pins. That again is for ease of use because the throttle body sits here, it sort of fouled the slam panel and it was hard to use the original uh, bonnet latch, so I just done away with it altogether. Made these little tabs here. This also holds the bumper into place as well and then you've got your your pins there and there so yeah just be mindful of that I mean it's totally up to you where you go about it you'll find your own issues I'm sure but this is the way I went about it with the issues I had and this my friends is why you can't hear me properly it's absolutely belting it down outside with hail Sounds like a million BBs being fired off the roof. Yeah, there's a lot of darkness in the sky. You'd think it was a uh, Black Sabbath up there. Five minutes later. Sky's clear, and the sun comes out. Typical British weather. There comes a time when you just gotta get stuff done. And that stuff is get the engine in the bay. I shouldn't want Wish me luck. I shouldn't need you, but I'm afraid that's not up to me. When I hear ya sing through my speakers It's like my mind takes a hold of me I've tried shutting you off for some time now But I'm still hearing your voice in my head Oh, I wish I was more than your fan now And that your voice came from here in my bed You're in my headphones, baby In my headphones, baby In my headphones, singing to me
Right. As you can see, there's no more daylight under the bonnet. There's an engine sat in there. The 20 valve is in. And what we're going to do now is going to start buttoning up the engine mounts. I'll put my low lift jack, my low profile trolley jack underneath with a block of wood underneath the sump. And what that's going to do is enable me to uh, sort of lift it onto its mounts because at the minute it's sitting on the subframe on the gearbox side and it's also sitting in the recess for the sump and that's fine. That's exactly how it should be. Because then you've got plenty of plate, plenty of wiggle room to get it where you want it to sit. I mean, it sits quite close this side, but that's just uh, the nature of the beast. It doesn't hit anything. And when it's raised up into position, that's where you want to be. So first off, we've got our top engine mount and the 16 mil. And we just want to Lightly do this up because you might want to wiggle it around the position. Then we've got these mounts here, this side casing mount, and that's resting on the jack now, so it's off the subframe. So I've got I've got a bit of wiggle room to play with. Right, we've got our engine mount that fits on the side casing, and you want to get. The top engine mount and that sort of married up. Probably going to need a little rubber mallet just to uh, sort of massage it in position because they are quite tight. But as I can see from my position here, I can see straight into where the two bolts are and they line up. But it need, the engine needs to come up by about 15 or 20 millimetres. We'll try and get this bolt in first. Like so. And these these bolts are 100 mil long, half threaded, and they're 24 mil head size, so 24 mil nut and 24 mil head. So I'm going to raise the engine up a bit now. Let's come down a touch. Not that much. And now I can see the holes line up again. So I'll try and get, I'll probably do with getting this water hose back off just to uh, give me a little bit more room to play with. Just tuck that up somewhere out the way and go there, that's fine. And if I release you off here, off the camera mount, you can see there's one hole and there's the other. So if you rock the engine back a touch, voila. Right, so we've got the two M12s in there. I believe they're M12s. Let me start tightening her up. We've loosened this mail off a bit from its position, just to have a little bit of uh, more adjustability.
and this now is starting to pull the engine up where it wants to naturally sit. Well, I say naturally sit, it's not really a natural fit, but where I naturally made it fit in the first place. Same for the back one, it's a little bit more difficult to get to. So that's tight. This thing keeps dropping off, it's doing my head in. A little soup glue in it on. Now, you've got some wiggle room still, but you can tighten these up if you want to, but it's time to do gearbox side. And that is a little bit more tricky. So this is secure on this side, but you've got some wiggle room. You still move the engine a little bit. You've got this mount. This will go over here. Again, these are really, really stiff. Nice and snug. But they do fit, I assure you. I've got pictures to prove it. Come back to this one in a minute. There we go. See, that wasn't too difficult. Let's move this bit of loom out the way. Right, so that's going on to there. A mallet. And from where the holes line up, it needs to move forward. Go and get the uh, bolts to that. Oops, it easy. Right, so you've got one. It goes there. this one so what I did here was I drilled through the original mounting points for the uh, battery tray mount and drilled all the way through the subframe not the subframe the, uh, the chassis rail Can be a bit of a faff to uh, line up the bolt all the way through the middle, but as long as it's somewhere near, I'll just cut my finger. I 
don't know what, what on. I tend to get phantom cuts in this place. Everything seems as sharp as my uh, my wit, as they say. I'll go in in a minute. Get them lined up. That's better this way. Well done. Like so. Trying to find that bottom hole. Is that for this one? No. Nope. So we'll go in a minute. Right, after a bit of fettling and uh, move the jack so I could uh, line up the holes. She's now lined up. So I've got to go underneath the car now and put the uh, nut and bolt on and get to one this side, I reckon. The other one's a little bit more tricky because it's next to the end cap of the gearbox. That's it. So I'll do the other one now, but I've got to get underneath the car for that one. So yeah, it's nearly in. At this point, feel free to uh, tighten your two big bushes. Bolts up. get a socket on that. I'm going to hook up the fuel lines and the one at the top goes to the fuel in. I do pop them first for return. Thank you. 
Is there a pig to get on? Run them underneath the engine mount so they're out of the way. Fuel returns the bottom one. And this is your master cylinder one. And it goes into the inlet, into this part here. got some 180 degree elbow thing on it because it faces this way faces forward then goes back on itself for some reason be ideal if it went that way It's gone stiff because it hasn't been used for a, well over a year. Goes inside there like that. It's been sleeved on the inside so it's hard. Probably reroute that back through there. I think that's how it was before. All right, so the car's up in the air. It's on the gearbox mount, which is up there, and the engine mount, which is up there. As you can see, it doesn't really move, it's pretty stiff and solid up there, so we will be putting our stability mount, which, if I remember rightly, bolts up here, and then bolts to there, it does, yeah. But I welded it to the subframe, I might actually drill, drill it out next time, and put some bolts through. But, you probably want to know clearances, it's tight, but... It's clear, all the same on the gearbox side. And that is the clearance on the driver's side for the sump. Also acts as a bit of a, a bash guard because we all know what happens to uh, 20 valve sumps. 
We can get up there. There's some space. That's where the uh, gearbox mount bolts up to. And the reason why we haven't got a stability mount, well, we use a stability mount at the front. Sorry, it says there's a tornado outside. If we made a dog bone mount, it's got to go from this point to here or here. And I just think that's way too long. Down pipes on. All up there. And it pokes its nose through here with the V-band. Shift the cables, they've got to be fed up next to the down pipe and up over on top of the gearbox. And a few more bits and bobs, drive shafts have got to go in. So yeah, still got a lot of work to do, but this is a biggie. It's actually a 20 valve clear now. Right, it's energy bay time. And try and sort this bird's nest of wiring out and find out what goes to what. So what you want to do is start off with the obvious. And that's obviously the clear ECU. So this will get plugged in first. Because this will enable us to see where the rest of the wires go. Right, so that's the way it goes. Now, what is that? It looks like lander sensor. So that's lander sensor one. So I can get plugged into there. So the third lander sensor. That's lander sensor two. We'll tuck that down the back into its original place. Find out what that is in a minute. Looks like it could be free plug. Clear water temperature sensor. So that goes in there. Right. So you know what the clear stuff is? So that's crack sensor. That's gotta go down the bottom. Just tuck that round right there. I mean it's gonna be a bit messy at first, but. As long as you find out where from this, we can tidy it up later. So crank sensor, that's in. That's going to be starter motor. Get some pipe work out the way. The starter motor's got two weird little clips on. So it clips onto there, so there's going to be that's an earth that goes to the body with an M8, but we'll sort that out shortly. That goes down the back. So that goes to the sump. But we don't really use this plug because we haven't got we haven't got uh, oil temperature on this car, so there's something to be wired in afterwards. This looks like alternator. So this one plug here is alternator and that's going to be oil pressure. So that's got to come down here as well. Should have put this pipe work on afterwards, but at least we know what they are. Are they gone? So this is... Right, so this big snaky wire here is 
four. A Mega Squirt MS2 ECU. Like I said at the beginning of these videos, we had this car running on the standard Clio ECU, but for fuel enrichment and boost control, we opted to have an MS2 Mega Squirt ECU wired in as a piggyback unit from the Clio ECU. So the Clio ECU is the, the master and basically the, the, the piggyback MS2 ECU is a slave. You could actually go and go, go for the um, EFI parts boost module, you would, like when you would turbo a normal Clio, but we opted for more options with the uh, Mega Squirt. So that's what this is for. This is gonna go for the bulkhead and into the car. We've got to undo this, take this casing off, feed the wire through, then we'll put the casing on and then we'll fit the uh, ECU up into the car somewhere, probably be in the, in the glove box or something. So yeah, that's all that sorted. Remember that funky little pipe we was on about? What we welded up? Well, this is what it's for. So that goes to the heater matrix. And obviously we've got to come around there. So this little loop here allows us to run our turbo intake pipe at the bottom of there without any interference. And then we run the other hose straight off there and into there, which is just a pretty much a straight pipe. I'll just see if I've got it at hand. Which I do. So yeah, so that goes on here. The better angle of it, so it gives you a, a general idea. We've got to put some Jubilee clips on here. We got rid of the original Clio pipe work, but we've kept the clip-on fittings. So Jubilee clip them on, and jobs are good in. So that pipe that we welded up and we, we shortened, this recirc pipe that we uh, repurposed, goes over the top of the, the turbo intake pipe tube. So it keeps it nice and out of the way. And it goes to the cold side, so there's no chance of it getting hot. So it's completely safe. We're gonna uh, put the washer bottle on. Like so, we'll just tilt your angle up a bit. So it's all starting to come together a little bit. I have noticed one thing, and that is I need to rework the downpipe a little because when I clocked the original turbo that was on here, it was at a slight different angle. And I'm not stripping the turbo and everything back down again. And it's quite, it's easier just to uh, just tilt the downpipe up a bit. So I'll just cut it, twist it a couple of degrees, and then weld it back up again. And that's just to uh, give us some more clearance on the um, on the subframe underneath the car. It's not a biggie, but it's got to be done. This pipe here, if I uh, zoom out a little, this pipe here will go onto there. Again, this is another recirc pipe that we've found a use for. That goes on that like so. Then this pipe here goes to the bottom of the header tank. On the Volkswagens or the Audis, the header tank's on this side and it's just easier to do this. It keeps it more compact. So I'll push that on a little bit further. I've still got to put Jubilee clips and everything on, but it's just about getting things where we want them to sit. But yeah, it's giving you a general idea of what everything's for and what it does. I mean, it's like a big bird's nest worth of wires here. That'll all get sorted out. But as I said, it's not important at the minute. The main thing is button the rest of the car up first. Then before we test fire, we'll get all the, all the wiring all sorted out and should be jobs are good in. It's all coming back, all coming back to me now. Right, you know when you have an epiphany, you think, shit, that goes there, that goes there. 
Well, that started happening, more I was fettling around trying to figure stuff out. I mean, it's been over a year since I messed with this car. And I was still thinking, I know what the clear parts are, but I couldn't remember the parts, what I'd done previously, and what wires went to what, because there's so many plugs which are the same. It's a bit of a tricky one. And at the time when I was fresh, it was all easy work. I had this car apart a couple of times for different reasons, but now it's all starting to come back to me. So you got coil packing. Here is that junction box I was on about. And this is for the starter motor and for the alternator and also for the fuse box. This is for the battery recirc in the boot. That's our modified Clio water temperature sensor. Clio throttle body, OEM, not messed with. Welded to, well, the part of the Clio manifold welded to the BAM manifold. Clio air intake temperature sensor. On the back of that is the Clio map sensor. This doesn't really do anything because there's a four bar map sensor in the uh, piggyback ECU but this is just to keep the Clio happy we could deepen this if we wanted to but that's not really necessary we'll just get it out of the way and that's for the uh, VVT solenoid on the Clio we don't use that this car doesn't run VVT tensioner so there's no plug here where there was on my engine so that is here and that's wired into the mega squirt so that will be tucked out the way you got your little mac valve down there which is mounted to the uh, gearbox mount and that's for boost control there's a little repurposed funky pipe from the recirc mated to the water pipe that we modified and that goes to the heater matrix. This pipe here goes to the top of the heater matrix. So they've got to be Jubilee clipped up. That's for the turbo intake pipe. We've took the uh, Clio Lambda sensor out of the way. So that runs around the back now out of the way. And that's plugged in. The rear one here is going to get tucked underneath the car you've got down here the reverse switch it's a bit dark but that'll be there where my finger is that's reverse switch it's wired pretty much the same as the clear one we just cut the plug off and put the uh, Audi one on Crank sensor wire, crank sensors tucked there. So that's like three wire, three wires on the uh, Audi and two on the Clio. And we just got rid of the black wire and kept the brown and the white of the Clio. Like, and that goes to the Clio one, and they're pretty much the same color on the Clio loom. As your thermostat housing. Alternator, that's in. That's one wire the alternator is. So yeah, it's pretty much where it needs to be now. This pipe is another Creations Motorsport Recirc pipe that we repurposed and we're using that for the header tank. Clear header tank, instead of the Voxel, uh, Volkswagen one, which would just sat over there, this is the clear, the clear one. So it sits there, nice. And it's out the way. So yeah, that's a general little walk around of what's what. Gear shifter cables need to go in next. Once that's all sorted, this loom gets tucked over here with some Jubilee clips. Not Jubilee clips, some uh, cable ties. That's the uh, Lambda wire that's got to go underneath the car. So yeah. Not far away on wiring. It's pretty simple, stupid to be fair. I'm no wiring guru. 
I'm not an electrical engineer or anything. I can barely wire a plug, but I managed to figure this out, so it ain't too hard. Somewhere in here, there's gonna be the radiator, fan, plugs, there it is. So that's gonna go to the spal fan on the radiator. That was for aircon, I believe, and that's a speed sensor. So for the um, for the Clio speed sensor, for the radiator speed. That's oil pressure, this plug here, down here on the oil cooler. That there is the knock sensor for the uh, Audi, but we don't use that. There's another knock sensor that side, we don't use that, it's just disconnected. So that's about, th about it for that. So at the minute, I'll just put loosely fitted the boost pipes and finding out where the vac lines and stuff go. The mega squirt's been fed into the car. That's gonna to go to the bottom of the inlet. There's a recirc that's gotta go in there. You've got the vac line off the uh, wastegate, which goes to the Mac valve, left-hand port. The top port goes into the top boost pipe. This is all little reference things for me so I can figure out where things are going. I've not buttoned up the uh, pipe work to the uh, heater matrix yet. I'm gonna loosely fit the intercooler, make sure all the pipe work and everything still sits where it's supposed to. It should do, but you never know with these type of things. And yeah, just like that. Right. Time to put the alternator belt on. Remember when we uh, knocked this up at 938 millimeters? Well, da, da, da. here we go. 6PK938. So, that little trick I showed you absolutely works. So, we're just going to go through the front here, stick her over the uh, bottom pulley, up over the top of the alternator. Like so, make sure it's not snagging on anything. Then we need a 17 mil spanner. Easier said than done though. Take the tension off. And boom. Just like that. It's half a turn, perfectly uh, tensioned, and win-win. What we're going to do now is uh, we're going to put some oil in. And then we're going to uh, pull, put some fuel in, block off a couple of vac lines that we're not using at the minute. It's loosely fitted, everything up. Everything up. So we're just going to put oil in. It's got gearbox oil in already. No coolant. I'm just going to try a test fire. The book's saying four and a half litres. So we'll put four in to start with. We'll check the dipstick. We'll turn the car over a few times. If it allows us to. And uh, We'll unplug the core pack and the injectors while we do that, so it doesn't try and fire. Let's see how we get on. Some fresh V-power in. Hook up a battery. Oh, we have some power. We have power. 
Right. Clutch has been bled. We've turned the engine over a few times. So we've charged the battery up. There should be oil pumping around the system. We've topped up the oil. We've now added the coil pack on and this um, injectors. We've plugged all them back in. The fuel pump's priming and uh, it should be ready to start. Let's give it a go. Wish us luck. Come on, girl. I obviously remembered what, where everything went, so yeah, engine runs, winning, but we're not out of the woods yet, still plenty to do, but main thing is now I need to uh, rework the downpipe and also clone everything back in, drive shafts in. Boost pipes on, hook the intercooler up, put some fluids in it, and yeah, still plenty more to come. How about that then guys? First turn of the key. Never usually happens that well, but oh well, we'll take it. Bit of a splutter and a backfire and a pop. Probably cleaning out the injectors, but yeah, car still needs to be mapped. Still need to button up all the coolant lines and boost pipes and run some coolant through it. Yeah, still a long way to go, but main thing is, she's alive and she's ready to go. Ready to uh, live again, which is a massive relief to say the least. So, as Jeremy Clarkson would say on that bombshell, we leave you with that uh, happy thought. So. Please like, share, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Peace out.